This is the RX 6400. It's currently the cheapest GPU that you could buy. Should we put it up against the new PC version of Spider-Man Remastered? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Spider dweeb, spider dweeb, does whatever a spider did. Can't he swig from a web? Y yes, yes he can. W weren't you listening? Why would you even ask that question? Oh, hey, <laughs> welcome. How you doing? I'm Spider Dweeb. Thanks for clicking on the video today. I got the new Spider-Man game, Spider-Man Remastered, on the PC. This game was originally released on the PlayStation 4. I, I don't have a PlayStation 4, but Sony has been great about porting its best games over to the PC. But really good ports, too. I'm liking the game so far. I've always liked the Spider-Man games, actually. I freaking loved Ultimate Spider-Man back on the uh, original Xbox. I played a ton of that game. And I've always liked Spider-Man as a superhero. His struggles, the, the, the struggles of Peter Parker, they're like real people struggles. Like compared to the Hulk or Captain America or Iron Man or whatever, but Peter Parker, he's, he's just a regular dude. He's always running late. He's always juggling awkward social situations. He's trying to have a stable relationship but keeps messing it up. He might be the most relatable superhero that I could think of, to be honest. I also like spiders, by the way. I don't kill spiders. If they're really big and gross, I'll catch them and put, take them outside. But uh, spiders might be one of the most interesting and fascinating creatures on the planet. They're, they're super underappreciated, just like the RX 6400. <laughs> Seriously, why aren't more people talking about this GPU? It seems like everyone made a video or two and then forgot all about it. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. Here's a video for you right now. This one, I'm gonna test the new Spider-Man on it. And I'm super curious to see how it goes because this is currently the cheapest new current gen GPU that you could buy. And it offers really good performance for the price. I made a few videos on this GPU. If you want a link to my review of this thing in the description below, it, it does have some shortcomings. You can't really use it for streaming or game capturing. And on PCIe 3.0 systems, it'll take a performance hit. But those are pretty small shortcomings to be honest. Uh, check out my video if you want to know why I think that. Anyways, let's try Spider-Man, a brand new game, and we'll see how it does on the cheapest new GPU that you can buy. Can the RX 6400 handle it? Well, yeah. Yeah, it can. Let's start off with 1080p, low settings. Uh, by the way, I did my benchmark separately to get these FPS numbers. Uh, the footage you see on screen was just me goofing around, just to have something more interesting to show you. Uh, no scaling or anything yet. We just need to get an idea of the raw performance. And, well, it's doing really good. I got an average of 55 FPS. The game looks really good at these settings too. Uh, in modern games, the low settings, they, they look amazing. <laughs> you, you're not missing much by going with low. And it's playing just fine. The 1% the lows aren't great. There were some minor stutters that you could feel when you played the game, but nothing game breaking or anything. I would play like this and have a great time. Bang, that's enough of the freak hey, show. Nice job with Later, this. Spider Man. Hey, just taking a break. Let's move up to medium settings. Uh, still 1080p here, medium. Uh, we got 51 FPS. So we went down to the FPS a uh, bit, but d not much. 51 FPS instead of 55 FPS isn't much of a difference at all. But the game doesn't look that much different either. I don't think the medium settings change too much about the graphics, so I'd probably go for medium settings over low because uh, 51 FPS is still perfect for a game like this. It's a third person exploration game, but it's also an action game, so I feel like 30 FPS would be a little bit low for a game like this, but apparently it ran at 30 FPS on the PlayStation 4, and you didn't hear a bunch of whining about the FPS there, so yeah, maybe it'd be fine. Speaking of 30 FPS, if you're okay with 30 FPS, I think you'd be able to go up to high settings. 1080p gives us 41 FPS average. 
and the one percent lows didn't dip much below 30 fps so if you wanted to lock it at 30 you'd probably be able to play with uh 1080p high settings and the game would probably feel much smoother if you locked it at 30 rather than playing with a variable refresh rate even if it is a higher fps i find when you're playing more towards lower fps like around 30 40 fps uh, locking the fps can help a lot with how smooth the game feels at high fps it's not as important at, at least that's how i feel about it so yeah rx 6400 1080p high settings you'll be able to get play PlayStation 4 performance, no problem. You are so cool. Hey! Fucking shooting your bozos blocking sidewalks. Where's the tour? Menace! <laughs> I was curious about how 900p would look, and it looks just fine, and it did work much better. 59 FPS, so almost at 60 FPS average. If you were targeting 60, this is, this is probably the settings you would want to go with. And yeah, 900p is totally fine, at least for me. I can enjoy games at 900p. Well, about most games. For some games, like uh, first-person shooter games, I kind of feel like 900p is a little low when I'm looking at the very close at the screen, trying to like see stuff in the distance. And obviously for like strategy games and uh, stuff, having more pixels <laughs> for all the text on the screen is uh, <laughs> more important. But for a third-person high action game like this, you, you, won't, you, won't, you won't really be missing out on much by running at 900p instead of 1080p. Wow, it's so nice. Um, I, I swear, I'll pretend I'm a hacker. Hey, swinging or something? Just Let's try out some up scaling. We're gonna stick with 1080p and high settings. Without scaling, we got 41 FPS. But this game has FSR 2.0, and when we enable balanced FSR, we go up to 45 FPS. That's not much of a performance boost, 45 instead of 41, and it didn't really improve the stutters. Actually, the stutters were worse, if anything. And, and you do notice the FSR implementation here. There are lots of areas of this game that they just don't look good with balanced FSR. Lots of diagonals on the buildings and stuff. So I don't think I'd play like this, to be honest. Oh, but hey, <laughs> that's the best part about PC gaming, right? We got lots of options to tweak things to our liking. Kids birthdays? Hi, Spider-Man. This is a decent neighborhood. Lighting. This was interesting. There's another type of upscaling that we have access to. We, we can't use DLSS, not on this GPU, but we can use this IGTI upscaling. IGTI is Insomniac Games Temporal Injection, which is the developer's like first party upscaling tech. Apparently this is what the PS4 version of the game used to upscale it to 4K on the PS4 Pro. When we enable it here, we go up to 43 FPS. It looks fine. Doesn't give you a huge boost in FPS, but it does look a bit better than balanced FSR in my opinion. Ultra performance FSR, uh, it didn't go well. It, it did improve our FPS. We went up to 52 FPS, but at a cost. Look how bad this looks. I mean, I, I, I always try to look at the bright side. You guys know this. I can enjoy some pretty low levels of graphics, but, but this, this is freaking disgusting. Y yeah, D don't bother with ultra performance FSR, uh, at least in this game. Uh, please don't. So where does that leave us? Well, in my opinion, on the RX 6400, the best settings are to go with 1080p medium quality, with FSR set to quality. At these settings, we get 54 FPS. This gives us a bit of a boost from native 1080p at medium settings, which gave us 51 FPS, and it's nearly identical visuals. And subjectively, it feels great. I really would have a great time playing through the game like this. 
Granted, my benchmark was just a little swing through the city. Uh, I'm sure there were some more action heavy scenes with a bunch of explosions and stuff that would take some dips. But I feel like with these settings, even if it did dip, it would still feel just fine. Like I said though, if you're fine with 30 FPS, go ahead and run with the high settings and lock it at 30. You'll have a great time doing that too. This is my sweet spot though. 1080p medium, quality FSR, 54 FPS. This is just great. Hi. The RX 6400 has been a really solid performer considering its budget price, even in modern brand new AAA games. It's nice that we have a good low end GPU on the market. And, and no, the GTX 1630 doesn't count. That's not good, and it's not as cheap as the RX 6400. This GPU is 125 bucks. 125 bucks, and you can play brand new, really, really great looking PC games at 1080p medium settings. And that's awesome, especially considering the price of GPUs these last few years. Even just one year ago, we would have dreamed about getting a GPU that offered this level of performance at this price point, and now we have it. I want to do some more content on the RX 6400 because it really is worth getting into the spotlight. Spread the word, people. This might be the best bang for the buck GPU of this generation. I bet a few of you guys out there have this GPU. Uh, do you like it? Are you impressed as I am with how well it handles modern games? Oh, and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see running on this GPU. I haven't done a ray tracing video on it yet. I don't think it's going to do very well at ray tracing, but it'd be fun to test out. Fun video, at least. If you have any other ideas, just let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm Spider Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Oh, my mom would be mortified. Um, nice to meet you. Like your shoes. Hey.